If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. Welcome to another edition of the interview show. I'm Seth, your host, and I'm with Carol Heiberger, right? Heiberger. Heiberger. She is the brains behind the ExecuSpeak Dictionary. It is by far one of the most useful dictionaries I've ever used. Uh, being, you know, working with clients of all sizes and big companies and small companies, there's terms out there that people use that aren't necessarily out in the normal lexicon. And Carol has made it her life's mission to fix that and help people like myself understand business terms and whatnot. So Carol, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. So what is the Secu Speak Dictionary? Well, <laughs> every industry, every company, every project has its own lingo. And our objective is to work with the people within companies, within uh, groups, and within organizations in order to document that lingo, in order to make it easier for people to communicate with each other in the language of the space or the place. Very cool. So, I mean, you start off with the, the, the general directory, you know, the general dictionary of Mm -hmm. general terms, which I which I think I have every different version of it. I have the hard copy, I have the Kindle copy. I don't have the app because I'm on Android, but there oh. is an app available for okay. iOS. Um, and I've used it. I've actually brought it into meetings and hit it hit it on my lap below at the desk. So if I hear a word I understand, I have to raise my hand and say, what? I just looked it up real fast. It's wow, a, I should be getting you down in uh, as a testimonial. Absolutely, because it, it has saved my behind multiple times. Cool. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's essential for anyone, even if they don't know that they need it, it's good to just in, for just in case for those times when you don't, ha when there's a term that you just haven't heard before. So. Right, and the part that I like about what you're saying is it was actually, the definitions were actually... Uh, written with the expectation that someone would be looking at their smartphone under the table in a meeting, <laughs> That's awesome. uh, as compared to um, on, in a book. Yeah, uh, well, I brought the, the book in, so at a meeting, yes. And so, is there uh, is there a plan to do and uh, Android apps for any of these for you know the businesses if they want them or? When someone's getting ready, someone needs to start paying me to uh, put together an Android app. If I had. Uh, enough revenue coming in through the Apple apps, then the money would be turned around to use, Android. to build an Android app. Well, but, let's get you some press. Let's get, let's but, get some Carol some money here. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm a startup. And so as a result mm -hmm. of any startup, I'm a cash starved startup. Oh, you have to be, you have to bootstrap everything when you're a startup. Everything. So um, we've got the, uh, the original is just a great cross section of, of business lingo, business language. Some of it's uh, a t a technical, and when, when I say technical, I mean accounting and finance, mm -hmm. uh, legitimate terms that are uh, just not in the vernacular, but yes. they are the language of business. And then there are idioms and slang and uh, abbreviations that- oh, abbreviations have saved me. What saved you? The abbreviations. Cool. In what way? Talk to me. Well, for me, they, they, they're like the RFP, the, you know, the return, the deliverables. I, I don't remember off the top of the, 
I had or deliverables. Do, that's a good one. Sure. Like deliverables. I'm like, okay, I get what deliverables are, but then they were like, RFP. Well, you know, I mean, I've been in the business for a while, so I know what RFP is now. But back when I was first started, I wish I had this book because RFP, RFP, return for project. You know, and then, request for proposal. I know music, exactly, music, exactly. But I would music think to yeah. our ears. May I have an RFP? Please. Exactly, exactly. So. So what, what was the impetus for this? What, like, what's your background? All right. So I got my MBA from Wharton when I was 23. So I've been talking like this for a very long time. And as I've moved from industry to industry and company to company and project to project every time I've had to do anything, I've had to climb up onto a new vocabulary. And one day I was just I'm someplace, who knows, where I realized that the smartphone in my pocket was smart enough mm -hmm. that I could put all I could put all these language and all this terminology on the on the phone. And as I started doing it, I realized that companies don't use glossaries the way they did when I was uh first starting in business and companies don't help people learn the lingo well how do you do that mm -hmm. so i just started it's the classic entrepreneur yeah you found a found a niche found a need and you filled it well actually i figured out how to fill it now i'm looking to find the need <laughs> There's definitely a need there. There definitely is a need. And, and the, yeah. pr the problem is, is educating the, the businesses that they need, there is a need. Because there, there is a need. It clearly is. You go into a company, like a telemarketing company, there's a definitely, definitely a different vernacular there than there is in maybe a chemical company. Oh, absolutely. They all have their own uh, special, special language. And the way we judge people in order to figure out does this person know what they're talking about or not mm -hmm. is is the way they use language and the words that they choose to use so the the first book um i wrote and i created it on paper and then i as self-published and then i figured out how to get it onto ebooks and then from there i figured out how to create the iphone app since that was the original uh, oh, plan yes. and, and th yeah I really wanted it to be that and then we actually uh, put together two more books oh you did what were those two um one of them is the is residential real estate we oh, took the language of uh, finance and property and um, mortgages and created a single volume and I didn't write that one because I'm not an expert on the subject but you got someone who was but i did get someone who was and so we have that as a physical book as ebooks and as an app and then we also took the philadelphia zoning code that, that, you, that i heard that one and that, that, that's ambitious <laughs> that was ambitious but i got somebody to write it who knew what they were talking about mm. and that is really just legal language we went right into all of the legal the legalese. Uh, yes. All the legalese, and we turned, transformed it into plain English because one of the um, uh, challenges of the zoning code in Philly, one of the things that they did that was new, was uh, created a means for people who lived in communities, regular citizens, yeah. to participate in the process. Oh, very good. Well, yes and no, but to participate in the process means they all have to learn a new language. Because, oh, that's true. You're right. Yes, that, that's really a huge uh, challenge. And so I've been on a zoning committee, neighborhood zoning committee for years, and, and one of my friends kind of dared me. Uh, and you accepted. And I accepted the dare. So we also have the Philadelphia Zoning Code. I'm now in the place of the business as a business where I'm actually looking for my first um, customization project. Very good. I've got a uh, software that is called text analysis software 
so that I could take user manuals or employee handbooks or marketing materials and run it through that software in order to create the glossary for a business or a group or an organization and then transform it into an ExecuSpeak dictionary style book, ebook, and app. Right, that is incredible. That is, so is this, is this your software that you developed? Mm hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, that's always been the plan. The plan has always been to go into the uh, uh, corporate America. Yes. To say, look, your, your lingo and your language, you need to teach that to people. You're, you need to do it for onboarding. Oh, absolutely. Customer service. Uh, customers mm -hmm. need this language so that they can uh, communicate. They all need it to communicate effectively. And in the process of trying to figure out the market and trying to understand exactly what I was doing since... I did so much of this based on intuition. Mm -hmm. I've actually learned a lot about how adults learn the language of business. Oh, that's great. And there is a formula. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, seven to 20 repetitions. Okay. Over time, which means you have to sleep on it. Makes sense. Reading, writing, speaking, and listening. If you don't use it, you lose it. Gotcha. Yeah. Exactly. It's, perfectly, it's commonly known that if you don't use a language, any language, you're going to lose it. Well, I, I don't think people really understand how they learn language as adults. Um, yeah. Most of the research is, is done for people who are learning English as a second language, but people who grew up speaking English... Uh, don't really recognize what's involved. You'll you'll sometimes see things that say, well, in order to learn a new word, maybe you need flashcards or you need to use it in context. But the the real formula is seven to twenty repetitions over time. Mm -hmm. And lots of times I'll talk to uh, people who say, oh, I just need to read it once, or I just need to. No. No. And then, no, no, I don't want to say no, because there are some people that have photographic memories and just can do that, but the mm -hmm. common person. But not in person, and one of the things that's kind of interesting is that the, the brain might not even recognize the first three repetitions. Mm -hmm. So maybe you think you only needed to read it once, but it's quite possible that you were seeing that word several times before you're, you decided to actually read it. Which makes sense, yes. The other thing that's kind of interesting, which I think is pretty fascinating, because they've done a lot of brain research lately on neuroscience. Mm -hmm. And if you read something and it has a word that you don't know in it, mm -hmm. your brain may not register that that word exists at all. No, that's, not, that's very interesting. Right. So what will happen is that based on what they've been able to discover, if you read a word you don't know in a sentence, mm -hmm. one, you, you might just slide right over it as though that word doesn't exist. You read the first and second word to get the context and you just miss that word, yeah. And you just miss that word. So if it says, you know, gargle twice and you don't know what gargle is, then you say, well, I have to do something twice. I'm trying to think of a good example, and that's not it. <laughs> uh, the other thing that may happen is if your brain recognizes that there's a word it doesn't know. Yes. Uh, it just might make up a word. It might make up a meaning. Just make up a meaning. Oh, based on context. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, but you got a 50-50 chance that you're wrong. True. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Okay, so if, if you just play the odds, 50-50 chance that you won't see it at all. So that's 50%, all right? Then you say 50-50 chance that I come up with the wrong meaning. Mm -hmm. So if your brain sees a word that it doesn't know in context, you've got a 75% probability that you'll come up with nothing. Oh, God. That's not good. And there aren't any tools out there in order to help people figure that out, especially when they're in the business world.
Until Executive Speed came out. Until I've come along and I say, look, I got an idea and Mm -hmm. just put this, put this lingo in your, in your pocket. Um, Some people have said to me, well, Google is your competition. But if, if you look up. You know how hard is it to look up in Google and get the right definition for stuff? Because there's, there's these terms, acronyms that mean five different things in different industries. Thank you. Exactly. I mean, especially the Army is the, is the king of acronyms. If you want a project, try and de- decipher Army speak. Well, there, there isn't any company that doesn't have their own special yes, absolutely. Uh, talent. And when people say, well, I'll just look it up on Google, the answer that I basically say is, number one, if it's on Google, you have to find it. Mm-hmm. And it may not be there. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the examples that I like to use is the Philadelphia Zoning Code because it's legal language. Mm-hmm. There's a distinction in the code between a basement and a cellar. Oh, they geez. have completely different meanings. Enlighten us. If you look up basement on Google, you'll you'll get the the, the church basement. You'll get the the basement rummage sale. Yeah, you'll you'll get the company called the basement, mm-hmm. but you well it will take you forever in order to figure out that a basement is fifty percent or less below grade, which is strictly a legal definition in the city of Philadelphia and nowhere else. <laughs> Go, gotta love Philly. And then the seller is 50% or more below grade. But if you look up seller in Google, it's going to, it's not going to, it's going to tell you why it's one and the same. No, it's just going to talk about wine sellers and it's going to talk about the seller restaurant and you're going to have to look for definitions and then it's going to be, uh, it's going to take you too long, it's, but then the meeting's going to be over. <laughs> it's going to be over. Well, not only that, but some of the definitions might say that a synonym for seller is basement. In some places it is, in some places it's not. Exactly. And so the idea here is that the the words that we're capturing and putting into this system is very place dependent and place project company specific. We're not going after generic meanings. We're looking for those meanings that only make sense at a particular workplace. Makes total sense. And so that's that's what we're trying to um, a- accomplish. So, Carol, where can they find you online? Uh, www.execuspeakdictionary.com, and that is e x e c u s p e a k dot dictionary dot com. That dictionary, not that, not dot dictionary. Executivespeakdictionary.com. Yeah, yeah, but I've actually. You gotta be careful now with the with the new I can. Um, I think they're actually be dot dictionary. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. So um, I, I, you can also find me at no more buzzword bingo. Oh, very cool. Dot com. Because that's easier to remember. Might be like easier that. to spell. Might be easier to spell as well. Well, Carol, thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome. And everyone go buy her book. It will save you. It will save you. Go buy the app. That will save you even better. Absolutely. And if, and if you're on Android, buy the ebook. It saved me that way. Okay, that's good. And the ebook is on um, available on iTunes and Nook and Kindle. Yes, the Kindle version saved me many times. Great. So. I'm glad to hear that. All right, Carol. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks, Seth. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye.